Sagbutt, Sackabush, Sackbush, Shagbolt. Some of the names given to this 15th century instrument, which we today call the Sackbutt. <laughs> The name sackbut really is to just differentiate between a period instrument used for period performance and the modern day trombone used in the symphony orchestra of today. So I'm often asked, why do we use this curious, peculiar name, the sackbut? Well, we think it comes from an old French name given to an instrument, the trompette sacre and it is in two parts. The word sacre means to pull, and bouté means to push. So it's actually an instrument describing the action of pulling and pushing, as opposed to a natural trumpet, which is just a fixed set of pipe, which just uses a harmonic series. This instrument has a slide which can give me many different notes at many different pitches with perfect tuning. So you can see we can get all the intervals in between the semitones, the microtones, and this is very useful when we're working with choirs that use mean tone temperament and all the other various temperaments. So let's look in greater detail why the sackbut differs so much to the modern trombone we use today. This is my sackbut and I bought this in 2007 and I have to say it's my most treasured item in my collection. It's an exact copy of a sackbut held in the National Museum in Nuremberg which was made by Anton Drevovich in 1595 and it shares all the same traits of that instrument. As you can see, the bell has a very small taper, quite conical, with very light brass and this bell would have been put on a mandrel, burnished, heated up and hammered in the traditional way of the time. So there were no hydraulic presses which instrument makers use these days or digital lathes. The bell has a silver garland and it gave the opportunity to the craftsman to really show off. And it's also worth mentioning that the garland isn't just there for show, it's also there because it acts to dampen down the sound of the bell and affects the overall sound of the instrument. Highly decorated silver stays, which are these bits here, and ferrules, which are these bits here. All, again, highly decorated. Not only for aesthetic beauty, it is also very good for the structure of the instrument. It gives it some rigidity, but also quite light too, not too heavy. So here you can see quite clearly how much trombone has changed over the centuries and the size of the bell is much bigger these days than in the Renaissance Baroque period. And also the bore of the sackbut is roughly 10 millimetres and a modern trombone is around 14 to 15 millimetres so quite a lot bigger in that respect too. So I'd also like to talk about the mouthpieces we use for the sackbut. My mouthpiece is made by Sam Goebel and it's uh, based on copies of drawings and engravings that we have of old sackbuts. There are a few differences that make such a difference to the overall sound of the instrument. The first one is that it has a very sharp rim, a fairly shallow cup and at the back the throat is quite sharp too, going into the small back ball. So I think the mouthpiece is possibly the most important component of a sackbut because it controls the way the air goes into the instrument. I've got a modern mouthpiece here 
and I'm hoping you can hear the difference between this and the sackbut mouthpiece. <laughs> So as you can hear the modern mouthpiece makes a different sound to the sackbut mouthpiece and I think the sackbut mouthpiece is slightly breathier tone and this obviously affects the sound of the sackbut. I've also added the luxury of a little water key which is a very useful thing if you only got a very short time to let the condensation out of the instrument. I've also had an additional tuning slide put on which enables me to lower the pitch of the instrument. I know that some of you watching might think I'm being fussy or nitpicky, but I do think all these small elements add up to a bigger picture, which makes this a different sound to a modern trombone. And it enables this instrument to blend perfectly with instruments of the same period, like, for instance, the cornet, the kirtle, the recorders, and also string instruments like the chitarone and the violin. In England, the sackbut was used predominantly in town bands and royal court bands. There exists a manuscript of all the musicians in the court of Henry VIII in 1532, and it also lists the fees given to its musicians. It lists 11 sackbut players and they were the most expensively paid. So obviously they were highly skilled musicians. We know that Henry VIII was quite a composer in the time and he wrote a piece of music called Pastimes with Good Company, which I'm about to play, which Henry VIII claimed as his own, but who's gonna argue with him? <laughs> In Venice, the instrument was seen in a slightly different light uh, with Andrea Gabrielli and Giovanni Gabrielli and their pupils in Germany. They saw it as a more of a vocal instrument. They knew that the sackbut wouldn't be overpowering. It would blend perfectly with their voices. And they used it in St. Mark's in Venice and many of the other chapels would have had choirs which would have been accompanied by a family of sackbuts. Monteverdi used many sackbuts in his pieces. He used five in Orfeo and he used three sackbuts in his amazing piece, The Vespers of 1610. I'm going to give you a little sample from his sonata, which is placed among the Vespers, really to just show off the instruments that he was using. The sackbut was used pretty much up to the time of Handel. Um, he used the sackbut, and it's probably the last reference to the name sackbut that we can find. Uh, in 1739, he wrote a piece, an opera, Saul, and he used the sackbuts in the Death March to great effect. <laughs> Thank you.
and we have evidence from letters written to Handel and his relatives that Handel intended to use what he considered an ancient instrument called a sackbut and they go on to explain that it's a slide with um, eight foot of piping so even then it was considered an ancient instrument so it's safe to say that this is probably the last time the name sackbut was used in a classical format. So it was at this point in the mid 18th century that we saw a demise in the sackbut as the French horn gained popularity. And very often the horns would have played the parts previously played by the sackbut players. And it wasn't until the 19th century that the trombone began to gain popularity once again. It was much bigger, it was expected to play much more dramatic music, the music of Wagner and Mahler, and the sackbut became a thing of the past. And it wasn't until the late 20th century when people became more interested in old instruments like the sackbut, shawms, rackets, cornets, there became a great early music movement. So now we can create a sound world which we once thought had been lost in time.